As I promised you guys, I will include a bit of content about automation in general. I'm going to show you how to do something just as magical using a little bit of Python magic and the power of automation. We all tap into Outlook every day, juggling emails like hot potatoes. But did you know that sometimes you might need to record those emails and put them neatly into an Excel spreadsheet? It might be a project you are working on which requires email reporting or trend analysis on emails. This skill is going to save you tons of time and bring peace to your inbox. By the end of this video, you'll have a handy script that does the email sorting for you and could be the start of your automation journey. And if you stick around till the end, I'll also show you a neat trick to filter these emails so you're only dealing with the most recent ones. Say goodbye to sifting through years of emails manually. I'll share some tips on how to tweak this script to fit your specific needs. Let's not waste the time and jump into it. Tap into Visual Studio. If you have not got Visual Studio or Python set up yet, check this video out. I also included a link to it in the description. You also need your Outlook app set up and in use. First, we need to import some helpers on board predefined libraries which will make out scripting much neater. I need win32com.client, which will help us talk to Windows applications. In this case, it's Outlook. It will allow me set up communication between Python and Outlook. I need Pandas, which is great library for organizing our data. You can chop, change, and clean your information just the way you need. You get to play with your data in tables, almost like organizing your favorite spreadsheet, but way more powerful. And date time with time delta, will help us figure out dates, like finding out emails dated yesterday or within a month or a week from today, etc. Now let's get the ball rolling with Outlook. This line is like saying, hey Outlook, it's me. Can you open up so we can get some work done? Dispatch function will get me to start the Outlook application and get namespace of M-A-P-I. MAPI or messaging application programming interface is a system Outlook uses to manage emails, data, calendars, and other items. Anyway, this line means you can now see and manipulate your Outlook data. We're interested in the inbox, right? That's where all our emails land. So, this line is telling Outlook, let's go straight to the inbox. Number six here is the magic number for inbox folder. Actually, there is another way where you can call the folder by name inbox, but I am giving you a shorter, straightforward method. Let's say we only care about emails from the last week. So, we're setting a marker for one week ago. Anything before that? Not interested. This equation will help you get the last week date. Date time dot now is getting the current date for today. Then we get back by seven days to the start of the week. With our time period set, we need to create a filter. Basically, we're saying, show me the emails that arrived after last week started. So, filter string equals receive time greater than the last week date then you need to convert the date to a proper format. That's why we have %m, %d, %y. This format represents the day of the month, the month as integer number, the year without century. This line is like telling Outlook. Okay, now bring me all the emails that match our time criteria. It uses the criteria in filter string, and it uses restrict function to filter emails from the inbox items. Then initialize an empty list call it email details to store information about each email. A list in Python is a collection of items that can be changed or modified. You can think of it as a container that holds many things inside it. These things can be numbers, text, or even other lists. In the for loop, we're almost detectives now, sifting through the emails. For each one that made the criteria, we're taking note of who sent it, when, and what they said, and then store them in different new variables. Try to choose suitable names for the variables that are clear, concise, and meaningful. Good variable names help make your code more readable and understandable for others, and even for yourself when you come back to it later. Try to avoid naming your variables thingy. Watch a call it too, or doohickey if it might give you a laugh now, but it will make you cry later. Back to the code. The dot here is used to access attributes, so we are basically accessing the sender's name. Receive time and body of each email. There is one thing is not resolved yet, which is related to the email time zone information. You need to tell Python what to do if the email contains such information. For each email, I ask to look at the receive time and check if there's time zone information attached to it. If the answer is yes, it takes the receive time and creates a version of it without the time zone information, making it simpler, just the way the system likes it. If the answer is no, it will do nothing and move to the next step. 
The next step is to append the note for the sender, the received date and email body into the email details list. Great, we've got our notes. But they're a bit all over the place, right? Let's tidy them up into a neat table using pandas. This way, everything is organized and easy to read. Remember, pandas is your friend when you want to organize your data. You need to add in this line a data frame and define the columns that represents the email details data. Now for the grand finale. We're putting our organized table of emails into an Excel file. Why Excel? Because it's easy to share, analyze, or even just look through when we need to. Now, you can call the to Excel function and provide a proper name to the file. Say emails from last week, and do not forget to add the extension XLSX. And that's a wrap. We've just told the computer to do some pretty neat stuff, all to make our lives a bit easier when dealing with a flood of emails. Lastly, print exported emails from the last week to Excel. This is to help you detect if the code is executed fully before checking out the generated Excel file. Now, time to try the code. I would recommend running the Outlook app first. This is to refresh your inbox and make sure it's up to date. Click the Run button and check for the confirmation message. In your current folder, you will notice a new Excel file is created. Open the file. And as you can see, a list of emails. Information will be stored just the way you wanted. And there you have it, folks. A straightforward yet powerful way to bring order to your email chaos and dive into the world of automation with Python. But this is just the beginning. The world of coding and automation is vast and full of possibilities. Now, I turn it over to you.